It's really good to see you all. Uh, welcome to uh, Bethel. I'm John. For those, I think we're all introducing ourselves. Um, so I'm John. <laughs> I'm pastor here as well, as uh, those are the two that you've just seen who I don't know who they are really. They're just. Uh, Kyle said to me, he said, I forgot to mention the prison. So um, yeah, this morning we've got uh, three of our guys in Park Prison this, uh, taking two services. So uh, they've already been at church about eight o'clock. They meet and then they pray together and they go off to Park to take two services. Um, Andres in the middle will be preaching. Neil on the right is leading worship and Andy is the prayer and support person. So um, that's what happens once a month. Um, James and I went, met with the prison on Monday and they're really keen for us to have more involvement and support more within Park. So please pray about that uh, wonderful opportunity, that ministry that goes on in Park Prison. And obviously uh, many of you have seen uh, Park on the news. So it feels like God uh, may be opening a door uh, to us uh, to be more involved and to take more of his lights and more of his good news message into that place. So before I preach, uh, I'd just like us to pray for, for Park and the team there. Father God, we, uh, we bring Andres and Andy and Neil before you this morning. We bring the chaplains. Um, we bring the, the, the guys that are in the prison. And Lord, as they've met together, they spent time together this morning, I pray that you will uh, firstly keep them safe. And secondly, the, the message that is prepared will be uh, important and significant to the men that are there. So, dear God, we pray that you will do your work in that place. We pray for the new governor, that you'll give him uh, wisdom and clarity, and you'll give him guidance as he leads that prison. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So this morning I've got a, a, a sermon for you. I, I think it's great. I've been really excited in preparation. And it's just two words, enlarge and stretch. Now, enlarge and stretch aren't popular words in our culture. You don't want to get bigger and you don't want someone to stretch you. You want to get smaller and more compact and find that life is easier. But for men on Father's Day, I thought I'd preach a sermon that's applicable to men and women, if that's okay, because sometimes women who have most days suitable for them and have a pretty easy life uh, for 364 days of the year and just one day we celebrate men. That was a little bit tongue-in-cheek and that was a little bit sarcastic before you gather your tomatoes and rotten through fruits to throw towards me. But when I was younger, uh, I used to play football and my best coaches were those that that showed me the big picture, and they stretched me, pushed me, and put pressure on me. You might find that in your life, those people that have got the best out of you, maybe in work, or uh, a really good boss you've had, or an instructor of some sort, a teacher, even a pastor or a trainer, that they've really, really helped you to grow, but you felt that they've been pressurizing you and stretching you. God doesn't want us to remain small and limited. But most of us grow under pressure. And most men, me included, speaking as a man, don't like pressure, don't like stress, don't like difficulty, and tend to want to settle where they are and tend to want an easy life. From 8 o'clock tonight, most men, uh, sorry, some men will be sitting in front of the football and they'll be shouting at those 11 men somewhere in Germany. And they'll be telling them what to do. They'll be telling them where to go. They'll be telling them to shoot or to pass or to defend better. Or why have you picked that person? But you know what? Those men sitting in front of their TV are not the men that are enlarged or stretched. The men that are enlarged and stretched are those 11 men that are on the pitch doing the work. Those 11 men that are having their breakfast, having their, their lunch, they're talking about tactics, and they're getting ready for the action on the field. And I want to be one of those men, not necessarily on the football pitch, but I want to be one of those men 
till the day that I die to be enlarged and stretched for God. And I don't know whether you can, that resonates with you. And some men in this room will have settled where you are. You'd have settled in that comfortable. You'd have settled in that place. And this is who I am. This is what I do. I never really fulfilled the dreams and visions that God had placed on my life. But I've sort of settled where I am and I've settled what I'm doing. Well, I don't see a God that looks at us like that. And our, our verse, uh, our key verse for us this morning is Isaiah 54 and verse 2. And it's, it says this, <clears throat> excuse me, enlarge the place of your tents, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. The context of this particular passage is a prophecy through the prophet Isaiah speaking to barren women. Now, you might think when you read verse 1, what does this mean then, the barren woman? Why does this apply to my life? And John, why on earth are you preaching this on Father's Day? Well, God is saying to the barren woman to sing and to celebrate, to give thanks for who you are, because the barren woman is a metaphor for God's people. And so often God's people can be low down. They can be sad. They can be disappointed. They can be disillusioned. But what God says to the barren woman is to sing and to celebrate, not because you're barren, but because you are one of my children because I know you, because I love you, because I care about you, because I've got a plan and a purpose for your life. When you start to understand how God looks at his people, how God looks at his people who follow him and who love him, we see a God that wants to enlarge you and a God that wants to stretch you. You might feel sometimes like an elastic band, and you might just want to be left in the drawer. God, will you just leave me in the drawer? Will you just leave me in the drawer to just be an elastic band? But you'll never, ever fulfill your purpose. I used to be a postman. Oh, that's interesting. When I was in Bible college, during the summer I was a postman. And one of the key essentials of being a postman, well, the second key essential, the first one is post the letters in the right letterbox. I was rubbish at that. And I used to think, well, if you get the letter within the street, the street will sort it out. <laughs> that was my own understanding of being a postman. Jackie's father, who was the postmaster in charge of Caffili Sorting Office, did not agree with me. <laughs> number 10 goes in number 10. Not number 12, they might not be friends. And I can guarantee you if I put it in number 12, they'd bring it back to the sorting office. So they'd have to travel about two or three miles to bring it back to the sorting office, going past number 10, and I just couldn't get the logic of that. But the second most important thing, being a postman, was elastic bands. And you see them everywhere, don't you, in your streets? Perhaps the modern postmen don't use them quite so much, but we had to, we had to stack them up into, into, uh, into numbers, into streets, and into areas, and those elastic bands were essential. And you stretch and stretch and stretch them, and sometimes they would break. But they were essential to keep things together. And we need people in our world and in our lives that will be stretched and look at how to enlarge their lives before God. So I've got two points for you this morning. You'll see them in front of you, but the first point is that God shows his kindness. God shows his kindness. Now you might wonder how that fits into enlarge and stretching. Well, we go back to the beginning of the passage where the prophecy and the prophet Isaiah says, sing, O barren woman, you who have never bore a child. Burst into song, shout for joy, because more are, sorry, who have never been in labor, 
because more are the children of the desolate woman. Now, that doesn't make sense, does it? But when you look at it in context and you flip over in your Bibles to verses 4 and 5, then we start to see a God that loves all, that cares for all. When you've gone through your tough times, when you've been in the fire, when you've gone through your sickness, when you've gone through your depression, your desolation, when you've gone through the loss of your father, when you've gone through a difficult relationship with your father. You know what God says to you? Verses 4 and 5, he shows kindness, care, love, and compassion towards you. He says to you, do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. So many of us, we live lives small. We live lives hidden. We live lives insecure. We live lives fearful. We live lives commenting on what others do, but we're afraid to step up to the plate. We're afraid to be one of those 11 stepping out onto the football field. Do not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. The world will heap rubbish and junk on you as a person. You're no good. You're a waster. You've lost your job. You've been rejected. Your marriage has broken down. You don't see your children so often. Not all of your children have remembered to send you a Father's Day card. Anyone walk that journey? Hallelujah. (laughs) Why did we have four children? One would have been easier. Why couldn't we have just had Hannah? (laughs) Boys are useless, aren't they? Thank you, Hannah, for the card. Thank you, Hannah. You've always got a favorite. Thank you, Hannah. (laughs) But you know what? We're not going to fear disgrace. We're not going to fear that humiliation. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. This is what God says to the barren woman. The barren woman is Israel that was exiled, that was desolate, that was, was going through difficulty. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. You see, this is how God sees you. He loves you and he cares about you. Whether you've had one card, three cards, 500 cards, it doesn't matter. Because God loves you. And men, I just love men. I know that's a weird thing to say. But I love men. But I love real men. I don't love weak men. I don't love women that follow meekly behind their wives. I don't love men that are just sitting in the corner going, I wish I could have done that. I wish I could have done that, but I didn't have the chance. I was overlooked. I was ignored. Come on, men. I'm going to be cross with you this morning. I'm going to be nasty to you this morning. I'm going to be hard on you this morning. Because I believe that God wants you to enlarge and stretch out who you are. And i got one more page left, so you'll be pleased. We've done one page of the sermon. Come on, we're doing well, aren't we? You can move about a little bit. You can wiggle. You can eat your Milky Way. You can use that little screwdriver. Maybe alter your glasses or do something with your watch. I don't know what use those little screwdrivers are, but I know that Lucy Joe had a great idea, maybe on uh, Facebook or the internet. So that's where they get all that stuff from, isn't it? Lucy and Kyle. It's all off Facebook, Instagram. TikTok? I don't know. So come on. God shows compassion on you, all of you, men and women. He loves you. He cares about you. But he wants the best from you, and he wants the best for you. He wants the best from you, and he wants the best for you. I got some little pots for you this morning. I know we're going to have to get a a special camera angle. And I showed you this last year. And God really, really challenged me while I was in my little greenhouse. I was doing some little man sort of growing things. 
and I was doing some things, and I, I realized that I'd got these uh, extras. And I looked at this, and I was weeping in my greenhouse when I looked at this. And you might think that that's weird for me to weep over it. But this thing has started to grow. Some things have happened. There's the, the seed has gone, boom, it started to germinate. But you know what? I've restricted the growth of this tomato plant. I've restricted it, and sadly, this tomato plant is never, ever going to grow any tomatoes. And it's going to have made a little bit of an effort, and it's going to have shot through the, the soil, and there's going to be some leaves on it. And I think you've got to keep maybe three uh, stems. So I'll take these off and pretend I'm a, a, a reasonably good gardener. And, and eventually, we'll, we'll, we'll grow some. Nothing's going to grow from this. It's going to make a bit of an effort, but nothing's ever going to grow from it. And even, uh, excitingly, we've got, some, uh, we've got a, a, a root system going on. So underneath, it's done quite well. But you know what's happened? It's got limited by the size of the pot that it's in. And I want to tell you this morning that there's some of you that you live life in this pot. And God's really challenged me as your pastor on this, that we live life in this little part. And we, and we understand life as a little part. Our world is a little part. And we want to pay our mortgage. And we want to do the best in our little worlds and our little parts. And we want to eventually have paid off our mortgage. And then we can buy a camper van. Then we can go on holiday. And then we can have breaks. And you know, Jackie's dad died at 60. He'd been retired for two weeks and he died. And he had plans for his retirement, but Jackie's dad lived hard. He didn't live in a little pot. He lived in a massive pot. He lived in a great, big, humongous pot. But the others around him weren't quite sure about the pot he was living in. He was crazy. He was wild. He was an adventurer. But I want to tell you this morning that some of you, you're not going to bear the fruit. You're not going to develop the, the tomato plants that you, the, the tomato fruit that you're meant to, the tomatoes that you're meant to develop. And I'm going to encourage you this morning that all you need to do, and I'm going to leave this on the stage and we'll see this grow over the next few weeks or, or months. All you need to do is just go into a slightly bigger pot. That's all you need. And I don't know what God is challenging you on or what God is speaking to you on, but all you need is to be in a slightly bigger pot. And I can guarantee you a pot this size will grow some tomatoes. Why? Am I Alan Sitchmarsh? <laughs> of course I'm not. I couldn't, I, I, I'm not, am I? But I can guarantee you that we'll put this in a slightly bigger pot and it'll start to grow and it will enlarge. And it would do some things that you would be excited over. And I've just repotted that. That's good, isn't it? You can follow my YouTube channel. Uh, John's, John's Gardening. Uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell. You can follow me on TikTok, LinkedIn, uh, anywhere like that. Just type it in, hashtag Rev John's Gardening, and you'll find it. <laughs> Uh, that's not true. I tend not to lie from the pulpit, but that is uh, <laughs> not true. But I, I'm particularly fascinated by the runner bean in, uh, in, the, in the pots. And this has done quite well. Look at it. Woo! It looks like a runner bean. But you know what's interesting about it is that it's in a small pot and it's thin. And you know what's happened to it? It's shot up, but it's weak. And I've got more of these and quite a lot of these you leave them eventually, like this one. It looks a bit tired, doesn't it? It's, it's gone over. And it, it, it's weak. It's very weak. And eventually, it will probably break and snap. So we need to put this in a slightly bigger pot because the root system will grow. Uh, see the roots have come out already? Oh, look at these roots. Aren't they fantastic? Aren't, aren't you excited to see these? But the reality is, is that it's, um, it'll end up just dying. And some of the leaves have started to die. Although this is quite wet, I water it every day. <laughs> I'm very faithful in watering. I, I look like I'm doing the right things. And for many of us, as we come to church, we follow Jesus. We look like we're doing the right things. We sit in the same chair. We come to church. We politely and respectfully listen to John. Sometimes we go to a life group. We might give our tithes and offerings. But really, unfortunately, you're stuck in a small part. You're stuck in a small parts. 
And for some of you, your roots have started to ooze out of your bottom. <laughs> See, I can be funny, Richard. <laughs> I think that was an awkward laugh. <laughs> Look at it. It's fantastic. But you know what? Those roots will only bear, bear vegetables, bear runner beans, if we put this in a bigger pot. And you know what will happen to those roots? They'll go, whoo, I love being in the bigger pots. But at first, it's going to feel very, very uncomfortable. So I'll, I'll put this in. But this is going to need a bit of support at first. So I brought along. Sorry, Paul, I've messed up the floor a bit. Uh, I'm going to bring this along. And this is going to give you some stability. We need support. And, and then we'll do that then. And then that'll happen then. And it'll all be fun. And then in a minute, not in a minute, in a few weeks then, it'll be <laughs> up to there. And then it'll be, um, it'll be up to the ceiling. And then... Next time I preach, then I'll be able to climb up it. Um, you know that story. So um, that, that's that then. So, men, I, I want to say to you um, that you compare and compete, but it's not going to make you complete. I'll say that again because I wrote that down and I thought that it rhymed. Men, you compare and compete. Oh, who's the fastest? Who's the strongest? Come on. My car, my muscles, my wife, my girlfriend, my things. But that won't make you complete. And I believe that a church and a world are looking for real men. Strong but humble. Loving and wise quiet and courageous. I believe that your wife didn't marry you so that you would live to follow her plan for your life. She married you because you have a spark. You have a fire. You have a passion, a call, a drive so that your tent will be enlarged and you will stretch those tent curtains wide. What God do you see? You weren't born to pay a mortgage or some bills. You were born to grow, develop, make a mark in this life and in this world. As I come to a close, Get the mud off the sermon. I always like to end with Jesus. And for some of you that have been taking notes, you'll have gone on a little bit of a journey. And let me know what you've written down because that would really help me if I ever preach this again. Because I feel as though I've taken you on a little bit of a, a, a random journey. And for some of you that aren't men, that are women, this applies to you as well. I didn't marry Jackie, so she would meekly follow behind me. I married her because she is beautiful, because she loves Jesus. She's passionate about life, and she's compassionate about others. I didn't marry Jackie, so she'd become an Aston Villa supporter so that she would iron my underpants. <laughs> what did I say that for? <laughs> I didn't marry her so she would cook my dinners, so she would hoover the floor. And vice versa for men and for women. And for those of you that aren't married, or those of you that are widowed or widowers, you can still make an impact puts an impact on this world and this life. So we conclude with Jesus. For all of us, Jesus stretched out 
his arms on the cross. Jesus enlarged his life and his world so that we might know life. We might know full and complete life through faith and trust in him. And if you want to know who you are, you firstly need to know whose you are. And if this morning you're not a Christian, not a believer, not a follower in Jesus, you need to know whose you are. You need to commit your life to him. You need to ask him to take away all of your sin. You need to encounter and experience new life in him. You need to, to allow him to give you a new life. You need to allow him to save you. You need the Holy Spirit to fill you. And he will equip you to do things that ordinarily you didn't dream or believe that you could do. You see, I believe that there's a church that can be so enlarged that it can reach the many but still feel small. I believe that the church can be a place that all will want to come. I believe that there'll be a welcome and opportunity to encounter Jesus. I believe that there will be a place where men and women can find Jesus. I believe that men and women can get saved and not go back to prison. I believe that people with addictions can become free. I believe that people with hurts and habits and pain from the past can be released from that. I believe that seniors can feel excited about life. I believe that hundreds, if not thousands of people can give their lives to Christ and their lives will transform from the inside out. I believe for a place of unity and vision called the church. I believe for a place where Jesus is high and lifted up. I believe that youth and children can encounter Jesus in the way that adults can. And I believe for a God that will expand and enlarge the reach of Bethel outside of Ponsaclean and into the area, into Wales, and throughout the world. So as I close, would you be prepared to pray this prayer? God, would you enlarge, stretch, lengthen, and strengthen me today? Would you take me from a small pot and place me in a bigger, plot, a, a bigger pot? Is there courage in the building today? Would you help me to be the man that you designed me to be in heaven so that I, might, I may impact my family, my work colleagues, my friends, for you, God. Would you be prepared to pray prayers that are brave and courageous? Lord, I don't want to stay like I am. If you're young or middle or senior, I don't want to stay like I am. I don't want the negativity of the world to be placed on me. But I want to be the man that you, God, have called me to be. So as our wonderful band come back up to the stage, I'm going to pray. And then they're going to lead us through for the, the rest of the service. If you're new here, um, I can guarantee the service won't go on past 12 o'clock but just in this last 15 minutes this is our response to what we've heard what we've seen what we've felt what is God saying to you today what is God saying in this moment to you he might be saying something in regards to your business your finance your home he might be saying for you to train or retrain he might be talking to you about ministry or mission. He might be challenging you about our local prison, about opportunities and possibilities that there are for youth and for children. 
for addicts, whatever it is in this moment, enlarge me, dear God, stretch me. We sing that song, Oceans, don't we? So popular to sing it. Take me out where there are no borders. Let's pray. Father God, for this time and for this moment, we thank you that you are here. We thank you that you love us, that you care about us. We thank you that you know us. And we thank you, Father God, that we are complete in you and through you. We don't have to compare. We don't have to compete, but we're complete in you and through you. I make my confession before you this morning. I ask that you will enlarge my tent, that you will stretch my curtains wide, and that I will see you, God, as you truly are in my life. I pray that you will make me brave, that you will make me courageous, and that you will make me more of the man of God that you've called me to be. And for these precious people that are gathered here today in this building or online, I pray, Father God, that you will join me in that prayer. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I pray this morning on this Father's Day in 2024 that you will make that secure and safe. And you will say to Jesus, come into my life. I give my life to you on this Father's Day. And then for us all, that we will commit to follow you who will make us complete in you and through you. And Father God, I pray that in all things and in all matters, we'll give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you. Stand